Hello everyone! Luckily this update did not take nearly as long as the previous one. This is update number 9, or as I'll better call it, the UI update. We have mainly just gotten UI done, and that's been the entirety of this update. It's been a lot of random assets, been a lot of random getting things in the game, a lot of screens, a lot of stuff that already kind of existed, but just formatting in such a way that it works. So, we have a beginning screen, character select, which is nothing right now, a main menu, which is functional, but has no art, an options menu, which only exists, but doesn't have any functions yet, randomization level, this is just an old level, this is an old level, and then training stage, which is the one where I test most of my stuff on, because it's just actually playing the game normally. But, if you go to the beginning screen, and I have to be kind of quick with this, so if I do this, okay, so it triggered, but if I re f 11 it, so the reason this happens is, if I press play and get this all done, cool, I got it within the 0.5 seconds. So, there is a time frame of 0.5 seconds before this beginning screen activates. You can see that uh, press any button is flashing, and since F11 is a button, uh, pressing F11 also activates it. This will not be an issue later on in the game, as we will have a opening cinematic, and maybe we still do that, leave like a 0.5 second, 1 second buffer before you can play the game and continue onward, but we have our logo here, or at least a version of it with a slightly thicker outline, press any button, as well as this gradient background, which I'm also kind of using as a top border and bottom border that you can see on the screen now, rather than having you guys see my other stuff, just like the, back, the bottom taskbar, which has kind of always been here for other videos, and I'm like, it looks kind of ugly, it looks really unprofessional, so let's click a button, you get your little blur, uh, you go over here, this is technically a main menu, let me see if I can move myself real quick. Hopefully that captures well within the capture, but there's also another little logo down here in the bottom. If I reposition myself, I think that is accurate. Cool. Back over here, uh, we do have some buttons. Options. This will obviously eventually bring you to the options menu. That's not available right now. Exit button quits you out of the game, so we could press that and we could easily quit out of the game. Let's go ahead and press again. Boom. Uh, and then these ones can bring you to normal fights and random fights. Ideally, neither of these buttons will have to exist in the future because you'll have just have an option in character select to pick random character. But if we go to normal fight, which just has it set to basically whatever two characters I already had selected, I press M real quick just to mute the music because I don't really want that playing right now. And you can see there's quite a bit going on. There's also a timer now, which is actually the most recent addition. I just finished that up today before recording this. There are three circles at the top, which signify the rounds you have won. Uh, you can see, obviously, that the health bars not only are still the colors correlating to their characters, but they now have character images, as well as you can see up there, Steam name. Because ideally, we're going to be selling this game on Steam at some point. And once we have access to that, that's going to be grabbing your name and putting it up there if you're playing online. If you're playing offline, that probably just won't be there at all. That or will just be there and maybe look a little bit weird, but it will still make sense. And then eventually, once we get access to it, we will have a little logo with... Not logo. Let me just press P real quick, so pause the game. We'll have some text here to say your character's name. So this makes it a bit easier to explain. Once again, we still have that Gaussian blur going on so you can't see things. We have resume as an option. We have restart match as an option. We have move list, which doesn't do anything currently, but it will eventually. Return to character select, which once again, doesn't do anything, but it's good to have it there. So once we have move list and a character select menu available, these two will do something. This one has an exit to main menu button. We can restart the match back up to the top. If we go to resume, or I guess restart match is the same thing we just told you. Resume does that. My favorite thing is you see this, oh geez, the skeleton just flew. So we restart the match, because this skeleton is based on physics, and it's just funny to have in the background, and I like it. We just keep on pausing it. You can make it really just die. But... We start the match. We also have something else in the game, which I believe if I'm on keyboard, I it's just pressing enter, but you can take a screen touch. So you notice that the screen glitched a little bit, paused, it's because you're taking a screenshot. Uh, we also have this timer, of course, which I will probably set it down to a bit lower just so we can deal with that eventually, but I also have my hotkeys where I can change characters to being at a lower resolution just to go to the different states. And you can see those circles fill up. You go through a healing state where you cannot move your characters. I guess I'll actually spam buttons this time so you guys know it works. Boom, 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 spamming buttons. Doesn't do anything. Of course, we don't really have sound effects in the game yet in general, but they're there. Or they will be there. 
I press P on accident, which is why it's honestly not that good to have it be where it's at right now. But escape also works. The only issue is escape does that in this version too. Uh, I also just realized that I kind of failed to show you guys something, but we will get back to it. Honestly, starting a beginning screen isn't bad. Oh, yes. Beginning screen, honestly, the FC ideal way to begin. Back to normal fight. Uh, we can go ahead and press P, though, to pause. Uh, exit to main menu. Let's look around. Let's go to random fight this time. Obviously, that just does that, but... If we restart the match, or we return back to main menu. Random fight. <clears throat> That's not good. I must have done something to it, or... Ooh, I know what it is. Because I recently restarted the thing due to adding the timer. So that doesn't seem to work at the moment, but we do have certain things that can control that. Namely, we have our game instance now being functional. So what this does is there's a event initiate, which goes to randomize player, randomize player two, and then you have these which, boom, random, picks a random integer when you go to this. And then if it's basically equivalent to 1, 2, or 3, it will set the characters to either character N, character I, or character E. Character N, character I, character E. And that is how that is working. That is the only thing the game instance is doing currently. Just kind of getting that uh, screenshot has UI, if that's true. If a uh, player character is E. This, this option right here is for later on for game options. Once you can change that around if you want to have your screenshots contain UI or not. And then these ones are purely just what player one, player two are. And then these integers are for the randomization of just upsetting the randomizer from the one to three and getting that all sorted out. Go down to health. That's not really helpful, but we go down to UI art. That's where we have all our other stuff. Kind of just chilling out. If we bring ourselves to the level which we were just playing in, and randomization level. Maybe does it work? It does work now. Interesting. So we might have just got unlucky twice in a row, which is very interesting. Very, actually, that's very interesting. I guess we just got unlucky. But for the sake of showing off something else, I will go ahead and bring us to our timer. And as you can see, it just kind of goes on its own regardless, but we have it set to days uh, because days lets us actually have a number show up that's greater than 59. Um, if you're using seconds, it will be like zeros at 59. Well, if you have 60 seconds, which is where like the base time would be, if not 90 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, that's kind of the ideal time frame right now for the game. Uh, but we can set this to... Oof, geez, okay, it's pulling up stuff out rather than just clicking on them. Let me put this to five seconds real quick, just for simple testing, so you guys can see that all this stuff works. We go back into here, four seconds, try to fight each other, whoever has the greater health gets a point. If we kind of just sit around, oh, oh, I forgot that that does damage, so if we let each other chill out, I think one of them had some slight chip damage, so now we can sit here for five seconds. And if they both have equivalent health, they will both get a round win, and you are actually unable to control your character until the clock resets, which you, the character itself has an event to do that. And as of right now, it just brings you back to the main menu whenever the fight is done. That is interesting that that keeps happening. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. I don't know why it's working otherwise, then. I don't know. It is very cool, very interesting, because the uh, randomization level does have these set, or at least it should. Let me see what your object is. <laughs> replace actor. Oh, I see. Place actor. Replace actor with... If we go to random spawn player 1. And if we go this one with random spawn player 2, which... They should already technically be, even though these things to the side say otherwise. Yes, randomization works. 
but it only seems to work when you don't come from the main menu right now. When I was playing the game normally beforehand with a previous level, I had it set to where the level itself would control that and you would self-initiate it. You kind of just pull from the game instance and have it like randomize your characters. As you can see, it still technically works. It just is being funky right now. And the matter of fact is, it doesn't need to work because it's not the result we want. What we want to actually have happen, if you want to just have the random option be an option when you're setting your character. So, what are the next things for us to do in this game? I mean, it's pretty simple. Let me also just kind of look at some other stuff that we have. If we look at uh, the healthy UI, because we actually have things really well sorted now. A lot of infight assets, character images, because we had options between a gradient and a version, and a version that's just a complete solid circle. Logos of all sorts of various creations. Uh, that's the key select thing that we had in the last update, which we've already taken out because it's just not functional, and we want it to be a later an option in our options menu. And then these ones are just uh, different vari varieties of how transparent that circle is, and then a filled in version of that circle, which is uh, a low poly circle that we used one time a long time ago for the proxy circle character. And now it's just being used in the game again, so I'm actually pretty happy about that. But if we go to health UI, we can look at a couple more things and how that's working. Namely, we have our circles up here, which are all separate variables. Our character images, which is also a variable. If we go to the graphs, we have a lot of things going on because we have character select, we have the setting of the health base color. We have a bind event to... Is the level still play? It is. Okay. That makes sense. We have a bind event to health bar update to set the percentage of the health bar, of course. That's been there for a long time, but event dispatchers have been the love of my life when creating this game. They have been so helpful on so many things. We also have being pulled from health, not from health, actually, just from the character. From win counter, we have a bind event to rounds one increase. On that, it will basically fill in the circle based on if you have one, two, or three rounds complete, uh, equal to or greater. So it just continues to work no matter how far you go. It's very simple, very easy to do. And then these ones kind of just get a continuation because as you go down, it's a lot of the setting, the color and stuff. But then now it's also getting the character image array, which we have an array set up for that, as well as an array for the various circles for filling in if your rounds are one. It gets the correct integer, sets it to the brush character, and then sets it to the character image. But the weird thing that you had to do with this, I believe it's the character image, yes, you had to basically set its default value to being transparent, or was that the brush? Yes, brush character. Yeah, for this to work, you have to set the brush character to be completely transparent, because otherwise it's just like a white square in the background of your image for whatever unreal funky reason. But that is that is life right now. That is how things are going. I clearly have a little bit of things to fix with the randomization just to initiate, initiate it. But once again, when you press the randomize button, it'll be initiating it anyway for you. So it'll work. Because all you have to do is call from the game instance and have it initiate it. Have it uh, go to even it's just the custom event of, oh, randomize player one and player two. And then it's easy peasy done. We go back to levels just to kind of give us a good screen in the background. Save selected. Yes, I forgot we didn't press play, we just press escape. Anywho, I or press F11 technically. Beginning level. How quick can we be? Ah, uh, almost got it. Is there a button? There is. Okay. Escape. Control Alt. Which one did it want? F11. Control Alt, oh sorry, Alt P, okay. Wonderful, now it's full screen. But, yeah, that's where the game is at right now. We have a bunch of UI that we've added to the game. Uh, the next thing of events is still more UI. 
uh, options menu has a couple of options that we could really add to it. We could add various times if the time is infinite. We do actually already have that implemented in the game, and I can show that real quick too. Beyond that, we do have character selection that needs to be a priority. If we go over to my UI real quick for timers, because this just has a boolean, but this boolean, eh, maybe. This is the thing. I'm not sure if this one will actually just. I'm. I'm I need to figure out how I'm gonna set this up because. There might just have to be two separate booleans in the game instance for basically figuring out if the thing is, if your matches are infinite in length or not. Because you're probably going to have a, a local fight settings to where you can probably pick the number of rounds you want. And as of right now, infinite is just a sideways number eight. And that is that is about as good as we can do. We haven't added any fonts into the game yet. Uh, and of course, given that it's infinite, we're not having any timer get it counted down. So we're not going to get any timeouts. It's purely how fast you and your opponent want to play against each other, which would be really bad if your opponent is like a big zoner or just like dashing around the screen, but you can't catch them. You're like, wow, and they're just going around. And you're like, well, what am I supposed to do against that? He's all the way up there. I pressed a button somewhere and messed something up because I pressed some sort of we're going to we're going to see a bunch of errors. And that's going to be the main thing because I pressed something that made it to where the characters. Yep. Because kind of trying to find the characters that don't exist anymore. When we did that little thing. Point is the infinite's there. Point is otherwise. We have quite a few things to do. And this is honestly where you get a good list of them. Because uh, we do need a move list eventually. We don't have any characters yet with full move lists. Character select. And animations for when you're on the ground. Like dead between rounds. And whenever you win around your basically taunt animation, victory animation. Those are the next big things. Character select, win and lose animations. Those are our priorities, or at least they should be our priorities. If not, it's just going to be more UI to do with making the health bars look better, figuring out fonts, getting numbers on the screen to look how we want them to. I'm a pretty good fan of the base default font, but that's not really reliable to kind of building up your game's image. But in a lot of settings, like even this, this is obviously very legible. It works. I'm going to have to play some more games again, like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, see what they do to see if they keep a more default font like this in their modern games, or if they use a fancier, more unique font to the way that their games actually look. Obviously, for things like menu selections, yeah, you're going to have probably your own font for like a big titles and whatnot. But for simple buttons like these, you might want to go with just a simple legible font. And then we're going to also probably be adding the characters names underneath their their health bar. So I'm not sure if the health bars are going to get thinner than they are currently, but they might get a little bit thinner going upward. It's really just a matter of push and pull, seeing how things work. If we make an options menu, it's going to basically be... A lot of various things that we need right now. Basically, is the game infinite? Uh, your settings for how many rounds you need to win. Your settings for how long your timer is with 60 seconds and 90 seconds and infinite really being your only options. And far beyond that, so far beyond after episode 10, we're going to be adding the online play. But for episode, for update 10, character selection, win and lose animations and possibly character names as well being added to your screen. And that is the goal. That is our goal for it to get to for next time. Next time we need to have character selection, and we need to for sure have lose animations and taunt animations. That is the goal. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time, and hopefully Nye is in even better state next time. Have a wonderful day.